Okay, so this is the first of my uh, screencast on data visualization using the ggplot2 package in R. Um, this is following on from my you know, welcome uh, video where I was talking about just the, the basics of getting up and uh, up and running using RStudio, uh, RStudio Cloud specifically. So hopefully you've seen that one and you're ready to jump straight in. So here's a link that takes us straight to an RStudio Cloud project. And to get started, I'm just going to click on that. And it's going to take a little moment and it takes us to an RStudio Cloud project, which I've set up already. So I've already installed some packages that we might need. Um, and I want, you know, I'm going to want to use this as the vehicle for introducing you to your first data visualization commands. The idea in this uh, series is that like, the intended audience is someone who's never used R before, never done any programming of any kind, so I'm going to over explain what I'm doing. I'm going to go extremely slowly and try and remember to tell you all the things that we often forget. I'm not always good at doing that, but hopefully I will remember everything that we need to. Okay, so when you open up the, the project, you'll see something that looks like this. You see on the left hand side here, as I mentioned, this is the R, uh, the R console uh, over here. It's got a whole bunch of things that I really don't like looking at, like R version 3.6, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to make that go away, and to do that, I press Control L. So Control L, uh, does nothing other than just clear the screen so that we've got a nice pretty thing to work from. Okay, so I'm going to be typing things over here. I'm going to go over to this right panel over here in the right bottom and I'm just going to click on the plot tab mostly because I just want to hide the files tab. I don't want to waste time looking at all of this stuff over here. We're just going to draw pictures so we'll keep the plot tab uh, um, open. Okay, so this is uh, this is us. We're ready to go. All right, I am going to type an R command. Let's just do the dumbest thing I possibly can. Ten plus ten, and I hit enter, and it tells me that the output is twenty. So obviously, R can add. Yay! Um, it can add two numbers together. The key thing to note is that the output here is the number 20. In the square brackets, the thing that says like bracket one, uh, close bracket, that is just syntax. It's just there to kind of tell you, hey, the first thing that uh, I needed to output was the number 20. That's a little bit of a lie, but I'll expand on that later on. Key thing is the output itself is that part. Okay. Other things to notice, if I go 10, oops, I hit a mistake, hit uh, the wrong thing. I go 10, space, 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 plus 10. I'm using an unfamiliar keyboard, which is why I'm so bad at this. If I hit enter again, it gives me 20. White space isn't meaningful, so the spaces don't matter that much. They will matter sometimes, and I'll try and call your attention to cases where they do. Here's something where it matters a tiny bit. If I go 10 plus and then hit enter, nothing happens. Other than the prompt here changes from an arrow sign, uh, from the, the greater than sign there, to uh, a plus. What that tells us is that R is still waiting for me to finish typing a command. So if I go 10 and finish, now it gives me the answer. Okay, if I do something like 10 times a bunch of uh, letters, R is going to give me an error. You will see the red text pop up a lot. The primary lesson that I want you to take from it is don't fear the red text. Error messages sometimes make sense, sometimes they don't make sense. Um, we all have to... Uh, get used to it. It's nothing to be afraid of. Uh, everybody gets 
horrible error messages. Okay. The last thing I want to do before actually drawing a picture is suppose you get yourself into this situation. It happens quite a bit where you've started a command and you actually don't want to finish it. You just want to escape. To escape, to get back to the to get back to the um, uh, arrow, the normal prompt. Um, all you have to do is hit the escape key. Okay. And so now I'm back to normal. All right. That should give you the basics. Um, I will mention one or two other little things before we do some actual data visualization. Notice that this is apparently going back through things I've typed before. What I am doing is hitting the up and down keys. If I go up, it goes back to the last thing I typed. Up again, goes back to the thing before that. Up again, down, 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 goes away. Okay, the up and down keys give you a way of scrolling through your previous history, things that you've, you've typed before. All right, that's enough uh, boring background stuff. Let's clear the screen again, control L, and let's type something. Okay, the very first thing I need to type, um, and this will almost always be the case, is library tidyverse. And that's just gonna load a whole lot of resources uh, that are needs in order to do the rest of the lesson. Library tidyverse. It says attaching packages. It tells us about a couple of conflicts. We're going to ignore this. This is all very, very useful information, um, but frankly, it's not um, central to what we want to do right now. So we're just going to ignore it and go, "Yep, thank you very much." Next up, I want to tie. I want to create a plot, and all I'm going to do is, or well, what I'm going to do uh, is. Draw a plot that has to do with a data set that is very, very frequently used when introducing a data visualization. It's the miles per gallon data, and it comes bundled with ggplot. So if I just type mpg and hit enter, it gives me a summary of uh, a data set that was produced by the Environmental Protection Agency in the US, um, and it talks about the uh, fuel efficiency of various different cars, or something like that. Honestly, I don't know anything about cars. I don't like cars, but it's, this is the data we have, so we're sticking with it. Um, so this is the car manufacturer, the model. Dispel here stands for the engine displacement, so that's the number of uh, litres, I think, in the engine. I don't actually care. This is the year of manufacture of the car. This is the number of cylinders, which I think are the things that go in and out in an engine, in a car, something to do with internal combustion. I would have made a terrible mechanic. Uh, trans, what type of transmission it's got, what kind of drive, is it uh, forward uh, wheel drive, is it four wheel drive, is it rear wheel drive. This is the city mileage, so that's the number of miles per gallon uh, that you get when driving the city. That's the same thing on the highway. FL, honestly, I've forgotten what it is, and I really don't care. Uh, class is what type of vehicle it is, so is it a compact, is it an SUV, etc. And oh my god, I need to stop talking about freaking cars. I hate cars. I'm going to clear the freaking screen. Okay. So let's say I want to draw a plot. Because I'm using the ggplot2 package, the command I want to type is called ggplot. You'll notice that as I type, R is popping up these helpful little suggestions below in these little tab windows. Um, this is, you can feel free to ignore it, or uh, sometimes there'll be something helpful here. Like I can guarantee that for where we're currently at, ggplot build is not a thing that we want. We most definitely do not want ggplot grob. We want this one, just ggplot. All that's going to do, and you can even see it in the nice little yellow bit of text, which I'm pointing to on my screen, which of course you can't see on yours, says so ggplot initializes a ggplot object, which is essentially what we want to do. So I'm going to go ggplot, open bracket, almost any time you want to type a command or any time you want to use, and this is the technical term, a function, ggplot is an example of an R function, uh, we will want to put things, anything that goes inside or we want the function to use goes inside these parentheses. So we've got ggplot, we've opened our parentheses, R has helpfully closed it for me already. 
then I want to do is say, what data set do I want to draw uh, a picture of? Well, my data equals MPG. Let's go with that. That's not quite enough information to draw a particularly interesting plot, but it should do something. Let's find out what it does. So I hit enter, and what it's done is draw a particularly uninteresting greyish blob over here in the plots pane. It's done something. It's drawn a blank plot. Why have we only got a blank, blank plot, you might be asking yourself. Didn't we have a whole data set? We had MPG, MOG, MPG. The reason is, what I haven't done is told are how to use the information. So each column here in this MPG output is a variable within the MPG data frame. That's the technical name here for the type of object we're talking about. Or if you want to be even more technical, it's called a tibble. You will probably hear me talk about tibbles and data frames and data sets as though they were synonymous. Um, they're not actually synonymous, they're different things, but for this entire class, they will tend to always be the same thing. Okay, so the MPG tibble slash data frame slash data set has uh, 11 different columns in it. Each of those columns is a variable. So what we want to do is plot some of those variables. So what I want to do, let's say, is let's just say I want to plot the um, engine displacement, so the size of the engine against the, uh, say, the uh, highway mileage? Let's go highway mileage. I've forgotten what's in the slides, but we'll go with highway mileage. And we're just going to draw a scatter plot. So let's do that. I'll clear my screen again. Control L. We'll go, I'm using the up arrow to scroll through and grab my command from before. So ggplot data equals mp. If I want to add something else to my plot other than this blank screen, I have to go plus. And what I need to do is add a geometry uh, I'm not f I'm not a fan of the terminology. Um, Hadley, if you're ever watching this, Hadley's the guy who wrote the package. Hush, leave me alone. Um, but that's what they're called. I need to add a geometry. So we, to do that, we have functions that all start with this prefix geom. And when I type in the type in geom, you can see it uh, that R is again popping up something helpful. What I want to do is points. So if I go geom underscore P O ah, what do you know? Geom point. I'll just hit enter to complete that command. Okay, if I do that, I now have, uh, I have to tell R how to use this geom point. What I want to do is construct what's called a mapping. A mapping is a relationship between properties of my data or variables in my data and visually meaningful characteristics in a plot. Those visually meaningful characteristics of a plot are called aesthetics. It's kind of a strange name. Uh, there's a historical reason for it. I'm, again, not a fan, but what we need to do is say, what are the aesthetics? So that's what this AES thing is doing. And I'll, now we're ready to say what goes where. On the X axis, I want to type, what did, I, what did I want to plot again? I think it was the dispel, and that was the engine displacement. So that's X, that's what we're going to have on the X axis. And then on the Y axis, again, X, Y equals, another space, the space isn't necessary, but I find it visually uh, comforting to do that. So Y equals, what did I say again? Let's go highway. Yeah. Okay, so now, we, ha we are set up to, to draw our plot. Let's have a look. Hit enter, and voila, we have a scatter plot. So on the x-axis, we can see down here the, um, that's the engine displacement, y-axis is highway, and here's a whole bunch of dots. Each dot corresponds to a different um, uh, entry in that data set. So we now have a scatter plot uh, that we can be proud of, I suppose. It's not the most exciting plot in all, all the world, but it's a place to start. So, in the next video, I'm going to go back over some of this and explain a little bit more of the theory, but yay, plots! We did something. If you don't want to learn anything else about R, uh, you can always just go 
export and just save this as an image if you really wanted to. But for now, yay, plots.